Submarines in World War II were actually submersibles. They were surface ships that had the ability to dive underwater for a short period of time. Cod and all of her sisters in this era spent at least 95% of the time on the surface, diving really only to avoid being seen and attacked. So these were surface ships and they needed to have good sea keeping abilities on the surface where they were most of the time. Now the American fleet submarine evolves through a number of classes in the 1930s, but one of the key features of the fleet submarine is the bow buoyancy tank. Now that's the big structure above the, uh, the eight limber holes and just below the bullnose. Hello, I'm Paul Ferrace, director of the USS Cod Submarine Memorial, and we're gonna talk about a very underrated ballast tank on the USS Cod and all fleet submarines, the bow buoyancy tank. Now, if you can imagine the cod roaring through the waves, uh, on the surface, of course, uh, every time a wave breaks over the bow, you're going to get everybody on deck wet, and that includes the gun crew and, uh, of course, the people up on the bridge. It would be nice if the boat could ride over the crest of the waves. Now, being a small ship with a narrow bow like most of the S boats and all the previous submarines, you're going to plow right through the wave and you're going to take a lot of green water over the bridge. That's not good. So the bow buoyancy tank uh, came along. Basically, this is a large structure uh, that contains air all of the time that you're on the surface. When you break nose first into a wave, that air uh, filled cavity is going to raise the bow up to ride over most of the wave and let you down gently on the other side. Um, now, of course, to dive quickly, you don't want to have that big air cavity full of air to keep you buoyant. So there's a, a valve, a, a vent valve at the top that's uh, controlled from uh, within the boat at the diving station. Uh, that is opened when you dive and water needs to rush in as quickly as possible. Now, up here in the superstructure, you basically have a, a, a water-filled cavity. You've got the torpedo shutters, the tubes, uh, but these large limber holes emit water, lots of water to come in as the air escapes. That keeps uh, the, the bow from being buoyant so we can dive quickly. The uh, main ballast tanks further down, they're actually taking the, uh, uh, the water in as they vent their air out. That's bringing us down so that these limber holes can then take on water uh, to keep us from being buoyant. And of course, as we all know, the, uh, the bow planes are rigged out and they're biting into the water, pulling the bow down uh, as well to get us under in as quick a time as possible, which of course for uh, most fleet submarines was about 36, 37, 38 seconds. Um, now, after the war, when the uh, Guppy program comes along, uh, the need for maximum surface efficiency is uh, deemed less critical. So if you look at our sister subs like Bakuna um, that have uh, Guppy modifications, uh, their bow buoyancy tank is uh, just a small fraction of what it was in the original configuration of World War II. It's still there. They still want to have that ability to ride up over the waves. Uh, but being a, a, a guppy uh, conversion boat, it's much smaller uh, to give them uh, the uh, added uh, 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 speed underwater. Because you can imagine this large structure, this large wedge-shaped uh, bow buoyancy tank behind the uh, bullnose is uh, going to be uh, creating quite a bit of drag. So while we're up here, and we'll talk ab about some other features I want to point out, over here we have uh, some of Cod's uh, anchor chain. Uh, this was removed uh, two and a half years ago in preparation for our dry dock. That is the, uh, the chain that was connected to our anchor. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the uh, chain locker was, uh, was addressed in dry dock. And you don't want to have all of that steel sitting inside a slightly different uh, steel box. That creates a galvanic corrosion problem. Uh, so we hauled that out. 
Uh, there's uh, supposed to be 600 feet of anchor chain. Uh, we did not measure that. It's quite heavy. It, it was quite a process. We rented a crane to come down and haul it out in sections. But here it is on display. Um, and as it turns out, it's uh, our snake breeding center because we have a number of uh, snakes that uh, have nested in there. So we don't encourage people to uh, sit on the chain uh, unless they're uh, fans of snakes. Anyway, uh, that's our ball buoyancy tank. And uh, remember to like, hit the subscribe button. Uh, we'll make more and we'll join you soon. Thank you.